creeps and a here and today i need i need to talk about dark harvest the book by norman patridge and the recent movie that just came out this year oh man i have so much to say i wasn't even gonna do a movie verse book on this but then i watched the movie and i was like oh i i have to talk about this i just feel like it is my duty to discuss this some of my movie verse books do well some of them don't i have no idea if anybody will even enjoy this video or if it'll be helpful anyway i'm not sure hopefully it is but i really feel like i need to talk about this so let's start with the book here we're going to go to the movie and then we're going to kind of go back and forth from the book to the movie from the movie to the book real quick i'm going to have to give a little bit of information about plot I'm gonna read a few quotes from the book. I'm not gonna give away the whole story, so you should be able to still enjoy the book and the movie after watching this video. As I usually say, I don't like not liking things. It does make me feel a little bit bad when I don't like something that somebody worked so hard on. So, um, you know, I try to see the positive of things, but I also can't lie and, and be like, oh, this was the best movie I've ever seen when it wasn't, it wasn't, it super disappointed me. And so I'm just going to be honest, but know that I'm not trying to be mean to the people that, you know, spent so much of their time making this movie, but we're going to go into all of that in a little bit. Let's just jump on in. So first let's talk about the dark harvest book by Norman Patridge. Now, full transparency, I love this book. This is one of my favorite Halloween october -y books. It is perfect for this time of year. I think I read it last year, maybe the year before, I can't remember, and it just blew me away. So we're gonna talk about how much I love this book, but know that this will obviously play into how I feel about the movie. This book is called Dark Harvest. It takes place on Halloween 1963. We have this omnipotent narrator that takes us on a tour of the town and we get to know what happens in the story. From the very first line you see this, like this is how it starts, a midwestern town. You know its name. You were born there. So we're involved in the story, which is such an interesting way to go about writing or reading a work of fiction like this, especially a horror story. So it feels almost like you're part of the lore. And I loved that about this book. I thought that that was so fun. I won't go into too much detail other than you're part of the story going into it, but this omnipotent narrator tells us, regardless of if we know or not, what is going on. So basically we find out that five days before Halloween, all the boys in the town from ages 16 to 19 are locked up in their rooms with no food and they are preparing to hunt down a scarecrow with a pumpkin head called the October Boy, Sawtooth Jack, Hacksaw Face, he goes by many names. Their prize for this is breaking out of this like podunk town where there isn't much there and all they want all the kids want is to be able to like break out and have a better life for themselves the people that win prior so all they have to do is kill sawtooth jack before midnight before he gets to the church and then they win the prize of being able to leave their uh, families are rewarded we pick this up little by little in the first few chapters of the book so now let's talk a little bit about sawtooth jack our little october boy because he is just so freaking cute and I love the descriptions of him. I don't want to go, you know, super into detail, but I just want to read you a few little quotes that I found my favorite. So his face is carved um, in from a pumpkin. So he's just, he's just a pumpkin with a face. That's all he is. He doesn't have like a human head or anything. He gets his face carved out and a light flickers from within. And it says, this unsettles the man for there is no candle within the boy's hollow head. Still the light is there. And so is the wet crackle of flame tasting fibrous yellow strands. The boy draws another tentative breath and his exhalation carries the rich scents of scorched cinnamon and gunpowder and melting wax. So I think my point of reading this to you is just to show you how fall this book feels. Like you can pick this up and through most of it, you feel like you're reading a book about October. It's just fantastic. It's just the perfect Halloween read. We have another quote here. It says, vines and leaves rustle within the boy's coat as he takes his first deep breath. The writing in this is just so brilliant in my opinion. I absolutely love it. We also get to hear his voice on page 50. I won't go into too much detail about this other than it says, his voice is sandpaper and battery acid. Just the most brilliant descriptions. Okay, so we also get after his face is carved, 
that his body is stuffed with candy. And we get a little bit information about uh, what that looks like. So like his his veins are red vines and his candy heart begins to beat. And just the coolest descriptions you can think of, atomic fireballs are stuffed into his mouth. Again, like the most Halloween story you could possibly think of. His face is carved, he's filled with candy, he's given a knife and he's pointed towards town. I also have just a few other lines in here that I really like. Let me read you those if you don't mind. We have, oh, this is my favorite line I think in the whole story. It says, um, it's like staring up at a legend looking at the October Boy, it says, it's like staring at Santa Claus or the goddamn Easter Bunny, but only if Santa were the type of guy who'd strangle you with your own stocking, and only if the Easter Bunny were the kind of bunny who'd stomp you dead and peel your cracked skull cap like a hard-boiled egg. <laughs> Come on, that is just so awesome. There's this line, the merciless trick with a heart made of treats. That is important and it comes in the movie, so keep that in mind. So I think those are all the lines. I'm gonna give you a few more little things and then we're gonna jump on over to the movie. So there's mention that some kids wear dime store masks and some kids don't. This comes up in the movie, so just keep that in mind. Another bit of information from the book is that you can't jump the line, meaning that nobody in the town is able to leave unless they win this battle with the October boy. That again is important and it's said that they must pay off their debts to the town, which is why they're unable to leave. I think the story has a little bit of deeper meaning too. This obviously is up for interpretation, but I guess my idea of what I've come up with is that maybe it's about the difficulty of breaking the cycles of generations, you know, being stuck in that poor town with poor families and not being able to make something better of yourself. There's also a lot of mention of I, not specifically religion, but I do think that it's important that the church is the center of the town, that that's where the story should end, should the October boy win. There's also mention of the church in the daylight looking beautiful with bricks, but at night looking like the scabs of old wounds. I believe that's some quote kind of like that, not verbatim, but something about it looking like scabs. And I think that that's important to the story. There's also a little bit of symbolism when it comes to the cross within the church where people look at it and they don't really resonate with that symbol. And so I don't know if it's necessarily like the loss of religion has led to this, but I think it's more for me at least. I have no idea what the, the meaning is for the writer, of course, but for me it just seemed more less about religion and more about, I don't know, maybe that they're so fixed on getting out of this town that they don't really stop to see what they have within it. I don't know exactly, but it is, I think, interesting that the characters do make comments, like they show up to church every Sunday and they see the cross, but they don't really see it. And so I'm not sure exactly what that means. And I don't necessarily know that it's solely about religion, but these are just some things that I picked up on my second or third read of this book that I may have missed prior. Um, and so I just wanted to bring that up and I don't know, leave it to you what you guys think the symbolism behind the church and the religious aspects of the story are, um, as well as that like bre breaking the generational cycle. I don't know, I'm curious what you think. But otherwise, let's move on to the movie because boy oh boy do I have so much to say about this. Okay, let's start with just a little bit about the film, how it differs because it mainly is different from the book. And let me start by saying that I am aware that this book may not be one that transfers well to film. They may have had to make some changes from the book to the movie to make that make sense. I'm fully aware of that. I'm fully aware that that happens with a lot of movie verse books. However, however, I think that for me, my issue is if you take something that's so beloved by horror fans, and I'm speaking for myself, obviously, how much I love this book, but it has, I think, become like a pretty big staple in the horror community of like October books to read. And I think that if you take something like that, why why change it so much that it just doesn't even resemble the original story? And I think that that's kind of where my issue comes in with the movie, as well as the lack of feel of October within the whole film. And so we'll get to all of that, but you know, I, I just, I don't wanna get comments like, oh, of course it's not gonna be exactly like the book. That's not what I'm asking, but I do think that if you change it so much that it doesn't even resemble the original story that you're starting from, why even adapt the book to screen? Just make up your own story, you know? Um, and that bums me out, it bums me out. The movie kind of tells you everything in the first few seconds. While it's not bad, I do like the slow reveal a little bit more in the book. I did give you a lot of, you know, that, but, 
but I do think that reading it is just more enjoyable because you get this like slow burn of a story this this lore that's like slowly coming to life into the town and it just makes for such a fun folklore feel to the story um, and that again is what that narrator brings to us too I think is it makes it feel mo more folklore and I think that's something that the, the movie definitely missed out on a lot. The movie shows a whole lot more so it also shows the cop telling the children what the hunt for the October boy is and this I think does such a disservice to the story as well because in the story the kids hear about the October boy through the rumors of other kids and not only does this make much more sense to the entire story and how the novel plays out but it also again makes it more folklore than like actual reality there's also some scenes i won't give too much away but there's also some things in the book that are attributed to sawtooth jack that aren't like it's just rumor spread by the kids and i think that that's so important to not be able to differentiate as the person who's the narrator is speaking to we understand that but as the characters in the story they can't differentiate between what was truth and what is not and that i think is so important and so for the cop to just be like here's how you kill this guy it's just i don't know I, I i just don't understand i guess why these changes were made to the story when the book is so good as it is the gift is also a car not the promise of leaving the town which i guess does make sense for kids they want a cool car like I guess but I think that the stakes are much lower because it's more focused on the car and not leaving of the town that draws the kids and this will come into play in a second but just keep that in mind let's talk about what Sawtooth Jack looks like because I mean on the cover he's a pumpkin head his eyes are smoking and he has a body made of vines and he's wearing um, just like regular clothes and his hands and feet are vines and that's what I pictured in my head because that's he does a pretty good job of describing what he looks like in the movie he's just pumpkin head mixed with Sam that that's all he is like my husband said oh look it's Sam all grown up it really doesn't look different from something that you haven't seen before and again this is where like I understand why they changed it because I don't know how scary just a pumpkin would have been like a pumpkin head I don't know how they would have made that into a full horror movie so I get it but I also feel like it wasn't original enough to stand on its own like I'll just watch pumpkin head I'll just watch trick-or-treat so um, that still is a little bit of a disappointment even though that's something that I can kind of understand why they did that the town is much bigger than it is described in the book and this also kind of bothered me because I mean this town is just this little town in the middle of nowhere they're like a very poor town except if you win the prize they get taken care of but other than that it's just kind of like a crappy old town everyone knows each other and this is like a huge school and i i don't know it just didn't feel as it just didn't feel like the book i mean i'll be honest it just didn't feel like the book and it also felt a little less realistic that it would happen in a town this large as opposed to just like a little town that kind of sits somewhere off the map that the, the real world doesn't quite know about. And so, yeah, I think that kind of ruined the illusion of the folklore surrounding the town. It was interesting to kind of see the setting of the town as well as the clothes, you know, it takes place in the 60s, the cars, the soundtrack. It was cool to see, but I also feel like I preferred the story in the book more because it makes you feel without that information that the town is more disconnected from reality and therefore your suspension of disbelief becomes a little bit easier because this town doesn't feel like your normal town and in the movie it felt much more normal in those senses and so it was cool but then i don't know you know let's talk about how the main character just didn't exist <laughs> the main character in this book just wasn't in the movie they just took him out and although i think that the character that they put in his place. I do think that it did add some complexity to the story. It was just far too obvious what was gonna happen. My husband figured things out, oh, real quick because of how they set it up and it just, I feel like makes so much more sense in this guy. They definitely gloss over the best parts of the story. The candy being stuffed into our October boy, the fire that ignites his pumpkin head, his fury, the scent of him, his veins like licorice, his candy beating heart. There's so much of that that's just not in the book and again i think that's because we don't have that omnipotent narrator and i think that the movie might have actually been better had they had that um because i think we would have gotten a little bit more into the characters heads i'll talk about that more in a second 
as well as just like more focus on those more October feels. I gotta be completely honest with you, if there were not jack-o'-lanterns burning in the background of the movie, it would not have felt like October. Even the scenes that take place in or near the cornfield, it felt more like a Children of the Corn summer film than it did an October Halloween movie. And that I think was my biggest disappointment and my biggest issue with this whole movie was that it just didn't feel like an October film. And that was really, really disappointing. I mean, light some light a few jack-o'-lanterns in the background and it's October. I mean, it just missed the whole feel of the book, what makes the book so special. And that's such a freaking bummer. Anyways, Sawtooth Jack is more vengeful in the movie than the book, which that wasn't a problem because of the way that it went. Um, I think this did add a lot more bloody scenes to the movie. And there are some really cool scenes, particularly there's a scene near the end that I think was my favorite. That scene wasn't bloody, but there were some fun bloody scenes in here that were the reasons, I guess, why it was rated R and like the violence and stuff. I still preferred this. Like, I, I really like the cute version of the story more, even though I thought that this Sawtooth Jack was going to be more intense and it was going to be rated R and they were going to go a much darker route. They didn't commit to how dark this could have been. And I think that that darkness kind of, again, does like a disservice to how the story ends up. Okay, I'm talking way too much. A few other points here. I like the kids losing their shit and, and like kind of going mad and turning on each other and like getting drunk and messing around. I did like those scenes, but then I also didn't because it again, I think that that was because they get to win a car, whereas in the book they get to like they still get out of the town in the movie, but I think the stakes are just lower because everyone's like, cool, a hot rod, whereas everybody in the book's like taking it seriously because they're like, this is my one chance to get out of this town. They're not just doning silly masks and getting drunk and walking around. Like they're taking this seriously. They're gonna hunt down that October boy. I also think that the foulness of Officer Ricks just did not equate to the book at all. I mean, this man is such an evil character in the book and that just was so lost in the film. I mean, you you didn't like him, but in the book you hate him, and that was a bummer to see. I already said that the main character in the book doesn't exist, but also the second main character is a girl, and in the book she almost single-handedly pushes the plot along. She's there for a reason, and it is a very important reason. And I gotta be honest with you, if the girl was or wasn't in the movie, nothing would have ended up different. And that's a freaking bummer. That's a bummer because she's such a strong character and she just is kind of there. I mean, the main character too, the main uh, male character as well. They're both just kind of there. They don't, they don't really change anything. They don't really, yeah, whether they're there or not, it doesn't matter. Wow, what a bummer. Let me talk about the one thing that, not the one thing, but there were some good things about this movie. There were quotes directly from the book like this. It said, uh, tricks with a heart made of treats. That was from the book. And there were some other good lines that they took from the book directly. However, <laughs> There's one line that is attributed to the winner of last year's October Boy Hunt. And in the book, we find out that that isn't even a line that he had stated, that it makes sense for the book and it's there for a reason. And it's important, I think, for the book. And in the movie, they just made him say it. And I'm like, I, I don't want to be like mean and like you didn't get the book, but I think that they just read the book and went such a different direction with it. And it just made me feel sad. The movie made me feel sad. <laughs> I'm curious how you guys feel. Again, it's because I love this book so much that the movie disappointed me. But truly, I think that if I just turned it on for an October watch, I think I would have still been pretty disappointed by the fact that it didn't feel super October-y. Um, but I'm curious what you guys think. It got decent ratings. It has like a 70% on Rotten Tomatoes. Not that I ever agree with those ratings, but it did get a decent rating on Rotten Tomatoes. So it could just be my bias because I love this book so much. I'm very curious how Norman Patridge feels about his book being turned into that movie. Such a letdown. Pretty disappointed by it. It's their vision and they went just a totally different way, which they obviously have the right to. But if you take something that's so well loved in the horror community and change it that much, then I think it's fair that we're able to kind of critique it in that way and maybe not like it the way that we would a movie that would have followed the book a little bit closer. So let me know. Am I just biased because I love the book? Let me know if you guys have read this, how you feel about this, if you've watched the movie, how you feel about that, or if you haven't picked up the book or watched the movie are you going to? Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry that was just me rambling on for so long, but I just had a lot to say about that. Let me know your thoughts below and I will see you soon with another horror video. <laughs> Bye guys.
I got nightmares in my head, I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper 